Hello and welcome back to my channel. I was walking around the garden and realized right now is the perfect time to talk all things hydrangeas, all of the different types of hydrangeas, when they bloom, and honestly why I think you should have at least one of each type. So in this video, I'll walk you through the six main types of hydrangeas. So those are oak leaf, arborescence, macrophylla, paniculata, petiolaris, and serrata. So I'm sitting next to one of the earliest blooming types of hydrangeas. This is oak leaf hydrangea. It is a native hydrangea to North America, and it is one of the earlier blooming varieties that I have in my garden. Oak leaf hydrangeas can get as tall as eight to 10 feet. They grow huge and actually they can tolerate more sun than your mop head hydrangeas, your macrophylla. This oak leaf hydrangea I have planted here is pretty much in full sun most of the day. It gets a little bit of protection in the afternoon sun, but you can see it's doing great. This hydrangea I planted last year, it is called Ruby Slippers and it is a dwarfer variety. I think this one only gets to about six feet tall and wide, but honestly, I prune on these a little bit, even though they say you're not supposed to, but it keeps them in check. And I think it produces more flowers if you cut on it a little bit, but only prune at the right time. So if I want to prune my oak leaf hydrangea, I only prune on them in the late summer. I will not prune on these after August. You can see here's where I pruned back last year. And if you trace these out, you can see the branching that resulted from that prune. So I prune for shape and fullness. I do not prune for size control. You're not going to have much luck pruning these back for size control. Instead, you're going to want to plant a compact variety from the start. So if you don't have much room, look for a variety like Munchkin that only gets about two to three feet tall and wide. Or if you have a little bit more room, I really love Ruby Slippers for the late summer pink color that the blooms hold. It's just absolutely stunning. Oak leaf hydrangeas are a great one if you love planting for pollinators. Their open flower structure lets the pollinators get in there and get all that nectary goodness. Speaking of blooms, those flowers are about the size of your head and supported on very strong stems so you don't really get that flop that you might from other hydrangeas. So the extra special thing about oak leaf hydrangeas are that they are four season interest plants. They start blooming in that mid spring with those big white blooms those blooms will age to a pink color depending on variety in the summertime. In the fall, the leaves change colors. So you get a fall color change with those huge serrated gorgeous leaves. And then in the winter, the bark looks like cinnamon sticks. So it really has interest in every season. Right behind me is another variety of hydrangeas that blooms at about the same time. I can't really tell if these bloom first or if the oak leaves bloom first, they're definitely budding up around the same time of year. I've noticed that these bloom earlier than your macrophylla hydrangeas. Behind me, these are hydrangea arborescence or smooth hydrangeas. Hydrangea arborescence is another hydrangea that is native to the Eastern United States. It is a hydrangea that blooms on new wood. So it is a perfect hydrangea if you are in a colder climate as hard freezes will not affect the flowers in the following season. In fact, you could prune this down all the way to the ground every year and it would come back with new growth and new flowers. These make absolutely stunning hedges. In fact, I feel like there's, I don't know if it's famous or not, but there's this incredible, incredible hydrangea hedge over at the Proven Winners Gardens that I just drool over. And that's the photo that I think of when I think of arborescence hydrangeas. Hydrangea arborescence in the south needs protection from the sun, so this is not one that I plant in full sun, but one instead that I put in a part shade environment. Some of the popular varieties in this hydrangea arborescence type are varieties like Annabelle, Incredible, Invincible. These are all hydrangea arborescence that bloom white. There are also some that have soft pink flowers like Invincible Blush and Invincible Spirit. So you can have some color variety in this hydrangea arborescence type, but not as much color variety as the hydrangeas that we are going to talk about next. Now in contrast, I'm standing next to a hedge of endless summer hydrangeas. This is a macrophylla hydrangea that blooms on both new and old wood. And you can see what stage the blooms are in. They're very much just an early bud stage. 
this is why I think we should plant all the hydrangea types. If you plant all the hydrangea types in your garden, you're able to have hydrangea blooms from about mid spring all the way until about late summer to early fall. Hydrangea microphylla are also known as big leaf hydrangeas. These fall into the category of ones you need to be careful when pruning. You've got to get the timing right. Big leaf hydrangeas, they bloom on old wood. Some of the newer hybrids bloom on both old and new wood, like Endless Summer and the Wee Bit Grumpy. Those are hybrids that bloom on both, but the old school macrophylla hydrangeas, they bloom on old wood. So if you prune this down in late spring, you will have no blooms at all on your hydrangea. This is also why northern gardeners don't really plant this type of hydrangea. They are the most vulnerable to cold. Late spring freezes will zap their buds and also prevent blooms for the following season. But they come in so many colors. So this is the type of hydrangea where you get the deep blues, the vibrant pinks. You can get lavenders and kind of deep purples in the middle. This type of hydrangea is your pH indicator and will change colors depending on the acidity of the soil. So more acidic soil, the colors tend to lean blue. Less acidic soil, the colors tend to lean pinks. Big leaf hydrangeas make beautiful hedges and are really stunning mass planted. There are two types of flowers in the big leaf hydrangea family. There are mop heads, which are those big full blooms that you see here, and there are also lace caps, of which I don't grow any, unfortunately. But they are that more open flower structure that will have the larger hydrangea blooms kind of scattered throughout. Mop heads hold their bloom for a long time, so oftentimes you can get, depending on the temperature, up to a month of bloom times. They do start blooming later than hydrangea arborescence. These wee bit grumpy that are the bright pink, they are greenhouse grown, and so likely this might be the only year that I see them blooming at the same time as hydrangea arborescence like this. Your big leaf hydrangeas definitely want some protection from the sun. Their huge leaves will lose moisture when it's really hot out and look very, very droopy. So putting them in a part sun environment will help them perform their best. Too much shade though, and you will not have many blooms and the hydrangea will look very sparse. There are so many different variety names. I cannot keep up and I can't even think of the top five most popular varieties of this type of hydrangea. I think that really speaks to their popularity. Breeders have put a lot of focus in this type of hydrangea and have created so, so many. The next hydrangea that I want to talk about can easily be confused with a lace cap big leaf hydrangea, but this is hydrangea serrata, also known as mountain hydrangea. These are native to Asia, but it's no surprise why they are so popular here. Hydrangea serrata or mountain hydrangea all have that lace cap type flower that's absolutely beautiful. They bloom on both new and old wood, so even if you get a hard freeze, you will still get hydrangea serrata blooms. And also the blooms, like the big leaf hydrangeas, will bloom you know, either blue or pink depending on your soil acidity. Like your big leaf hydrangea, you also want to plant these in a part sun environment and make sure that the soil stays moist and you will just be rewarded with blooms from about late spring to, I don't know, throughout the summer. It does a really good job of reblooming in my garden. Then over here, I am standing next to a vining hydrangea. This is safe enough of a distance away. Behind me is a climbing or vining hydrangea. I actually have no clue when this blooms. It's been in my garden for three years and has not bloomed. I believe it blooms on old wood and I think every year we've had a weather event that has prevented it from blooming. Don't quote me on that, I'm not really sure. Every year I threaten to rip it out if it doesn't bloom and this year wasps have decided to build a nest in there. It's more specifically paper wasps. They certainly scare the you know what out of me every single time because I just can't, I can't. <sighs> But mining hydrangeas, that is a type of hydrangea. Not sure when it blooms because I've never seen it, but there it is. 
Okay, fine. I did some Googling for you and I found out that vining hydrangeas bloom in late spring to early summer and also they can take up to five years to bloom for the first time. So I will be patient for another two years. Their blooms are that lace cap flower type structure and they get huge. They can grow 30 to 80 feet tall, readily climb trees and you can keep them pruned to shorter heights or have them trained to grow on a wall like I've done here. Climb by producing these aerial roots so it's not like you need to create a trellis structure to support them. They just kind of go wherever you place them and then you can manipulate it from there to control growth. And last but not least, I am kneeling next to the latest hydrangea to bloom, the one that doesn't even have any buds on it yet, panicle hydrangeas. Panicle hydrangeas have blooms that are like the oak leaf blooms where they're kind of that conical shape. About the 4th of July, you'll get the green kind of color, then they open up and are white, and then they age to a pink depending on the variety. There are different varieties of panicle hydrangeas, just like all the other types of hydrangeas varying in different sizes and bloom timing. So you can have a quick fire, which seems to bloom a little bit early in the year for panicle hydrangeas, or these limelights, which for me are about that July time frame. There are panicle hydrangeas like limelight that'll get eight feet tall. You can grow limelight prime that's around six feet tall, or even little lime that stays in the four feet tall range. This is the type of hydrangea that you see grown and sold as standard or tree form. And honestly, I love hydrangea paniculata because in that summertime, that bright burst of white somehow feels a little cooling even when it's a gajillion bajillion degrees outside. Unlike hydrangea macrophylla or hydrangea serrata, panicle hydrangeas want full sun. If you plant these in a shaded spot, they will be very, very sparse and very floppy. You will not get a lot of blooms and you will not be impressed with this hydrangea. Plant them in full sun even in Atlanta, they don't need that much protection from the sun and they will perform beautifully for you. Like hydrangea arborescence, limelight hydrangeas bloom on new wood, which means that you do not have to worry about a late spring frost zapping all of your blooms for the season. This is a hydrangea that is pruned back pretty much every late winter or early spring. I prune it back to about knee height and then after that, it just takes off and it's very low maintenance. I don't do anything to it other than cut bouquets when the blooms arrive in July. When people ask me what my favorite hydrangea is and they like insist on me answering, I kind of cop out and say, I like whichever hydrangea is in bloom right now. Right now, the oak leaf and the smooth hydrangeas or hydrangea arborescence are really stealing the show. Those are my favorite hydrangeas. Once they start petering out, I'm going to say that hydrangea macrophylla is my favorite hydrangea. And then once those start going into their kind of summer, it's way too hot dormancy, hydrangea paniculata or panicle hydrangeas are going to start blooming. Telling you if throughout your garden you plant each type of hydrangea, you will have the hydrangea blooms continue throughout the season. So I hope that helps break down the family of hydrangeas, what conditions they like and when they bloom. And I will see you in the next video.